welcome. Thank you for listening to this message from Garden Valley Church. For more messages, please visit our website at gardenvalleychurch.org. I want to talk to you about living. Actually, this is entitled Live Life Before You Die. Live life before you die. Truth is, we're all going to die. Not today, but someday. It's just a 100% guarantee. Everyone will die, not everyone lives. You might be surprised to know who said that first. He was Scottish. Any guesses? William Wallace. Braveheart. Everyone will die, not everyone lives. Think of life, think of life as an amusement park. You get in. You're there for a limited time. There are a lot of choices to make. You can go over here, you can go over here, you can go over there. There's lots to do, there's lots to see. There's a lot of attractions and there's a lot of distractions at the amusement park. And it's easy to forget why you went to the park and what you really want to experience. But life... Life, death is guaranteed, life is not. Death is certain, life is a choice. Hello. Most people, and that would include most people here today, I'm sure, Most people just live according to someone else's agenda, someone else's script that they wrote for you. But God wants you to experience life. He said, I've come, in fact, to give you life, an abundant life at that. Not just life, but abundant life. What does that look like? We're going to talk about it today. In Romans chapter 13, verses 11 and 12, I want to read that for you, and I want to highlight some specific words because there there are three powerful words buried in this verse, and we're going to look at those three, not all this morning, Uh, We'll take a little break next Sunday because it's Mother's Day, and then we'll pick this back up again the Sunday after Mother's Day. This is all the more urgent, Paul says. For you know how late it is. It's getting late. Circle that word urgent. It's getting late. Time is running out. Wake up. Wake up. Why don't you tell your neighbor, hey, wake up. Wake up. Wake up. For our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. When the kids were little and we were on our road trips, are we there yet? And I always had one thing to say. This is what dad would always say. We're closer than when we started. That would just tick them off. It ticked them off and eventually they'd quit asking. (laughs) Wake up. 
That's your cue, girl. She's not even watching. Wake up! For our salvation is nearer. The night is almost gone. The day of salvation will soon be here. So remove your dark deeds. Remove your dark deeds. What are dark deeds? Well, that's the stuff you don't want anybody to know about. You know, the ACDC sang about it, remember? Dirty deeds, done dirt cheap. Dirty deeds, that stuff you don't want anybody to know about, you don't want anybody to see, you don't want anybody to... Paul says, remove your dark deeds like dirty clothes. Hallelujah. And put on... See, there's some things you got to take off, some things that need to go. And there's some things you need to put on. Put on the armor of right living, Paul said. Isn't that good? I want to I wanna look at three words that I believe are, are words for us at Garden Valley Church. This isn't a canned message that I got online. I promise you, this is something that is for us, right here, right now, for such a time as this. Three words. Number one, and what we're going to talk about today is, first of all, a sense of urgency. Paul makes the statement, this is urgent. even more urgent that you know what time it is. <clears throat> we will also be talking about a sense of eternity because Paul, Paul wants us to understand clearly that with one eye we have our focus on the here and now. And with the other eye, we are focused on eternity, on eternity, eternity, and attorney. <laughs> okay, so one eye looking where? Right here, right now. Because this is the only right here, right now I'm going to get on this planet. And the other eye, I am looking at those things which Paul said are eternal, that will never pass away. This is going to pass away, but that will never pass away. We're going to talk about that later. And thirdly, we're going to, we're going to talk about a sense of priority. But God has, in fact, called you and called me to live by vision, if you're, if, you're, if you're a person, if you're a Christian, if you call yourself a Christian and you are not living with a sense of priority, you're all over the place. If we were to put your, your life on a, your trajectory on a piece of graph paper, it would probably look like this. Up. Oh and down you need to get set free from a priority less lifestyle amen that's a good place to say amen mm -hmm. I can see I'm gonna have to fight you for this one today okay it's on baby come on <laughs> I'm not messing with you today. Live before you die. <clears throat> today, we're going to talk about a true sense of urgency. Boy, did I learn some things about urgency that I did not know. Can't wait to share them with you. Most of us, 
especially those that are online. Now, listen, I, I realize that, that, that uh, listen, you folks that are watching online, you're, I, you, you always get the bad rap. Yeah, you know, it, but we're glad you're there. We tease you a little bit. No one in this room, of course, would, would, be, would characterize themselves as complacent. And yet, complacency is, uh, is a disease that will cause you to die a slow death. Jesus had some awful things to say about its first cousin, apathy. The first cousin of complacency is apathy. They're related. Jesus said about apathy, I'd rather have you hot or cold, baby, but lukewarm makes me nauseous. That's in the Bible. It's actually even worse than that. It's worse than that. He said, hot, cold. Be one or the other. Don't be lukewarm. Complacency is a a slow death, dear ones. Complacency is a feeling of self-satisfaction and unawareness that there is any danger ahead. That's the definition. We, un- we underestimate the power of complacency. Did you know that studies have concluded that complacent people never view themselves as complacent? So the truth is, you wouldn't know you were if you are. <laughs> it's, one of the, it's, it's one of the side effects. Actual urgency, dear ones, a sense of urgency, a sense of urgency actually defeats complacency in your life. That's how important urgency is. Actual urgency is now, it's not tomorrow. It's not an hour from now. Actual urgency is, say now. Say now, now. now, now. (laughs) It's not eventually, it's now. Actual urgency understands that this life contains great opportunities and great hazards. Urgency understands that. On this hand, man, there are some amazing opportunities. On this hand, boy, there's landmines. Urgency allows you, urgency allows you to see the opportunities. All right. You kind of got me now. I'm not going to do all the work for you this morning. So let's just pray. Lord, I need to get this. Would you just say that? Lord, I need to get this. I need to get this. I, 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 need, to, I need some urgency right now. I, I need some urgency right now. And the reason is because it, it will dispel complacency. There's some of you here. 
that before the year's out, you could actually start your own business. It's been your dream. But you see, complacency will never launch. There's some things in your marriage. There's some things in your finances. Okay, I'm coming down to get close to you. There's things in your marriage. There's things in your finances that will, you know the right thing to do, but it takes urgency to do it now. And some of you, you know the right thing to do. I mean, how many times have I heard Karen say those words to me? You know the right thing to do, you just won't. How many have heard those words? <laughs> the rest of the guys are liars. <laughs> you got other demons too. I mean, that lying spirit. <laughs> you know the thing you need to do. I mean, God dropped that in you. you you've read your Bible. You've heard a message. You, you, we, we know the right thing to do, but it takes urgency to do it now. Not to put it off till tomorrow. You know what? I think urgency is perhaps one of the most, if not the most important thing a Christ follower needs to have. That's the number one thing. It's a sense of urgency. Urgency will allow you to see some opportunities when others only see hazards. Urgency gets on board instead of traveling at 35 miles an hour when 65 is required. Complacency is 35 in a 65 mile and that. How many of you have ever gotten behind somebody that just. <laughs> Can I just tell you how that, how that irks me? When they're, when they're piddling around on their cell phone and they're supposed to be turning left and I'm the fourth car, and because they have piddled around at the light on their phone, they weren't even looking. Oh, by the time they, they get through, but I don't get through. Listen, your complacency is costing me. Your complacency is costing me. It's not just costing you. It's costing people around you. It's costing your family. It's costing you in your marriage. It's costing you in your finances. Complacency. Let me tell you how I really think about it. <laughs> Most of the time, complacent people get to the station after the train has Jesus in the culture of a typical workplace boy this is going to be tight in 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 the culture of a typical workplace complacent people will sink the ship every time. If, listen, if you are a boss or a manager and you have an, a, a complacent employee, I say fire their butt. Send them packing somewhere else. Actually, send them to your competition. Because they're going to sink you. They're going to sink you. I don't want anybody working with me that does not have a, a sense of urgency.
You better bring that to work with you tomorrow. Or just don't tell them you go to Garden Valley Church. Just do me a favor, do us all a favor, don't advertise where you go to church. <laughs> you think I'm kidding. You, you begin to look at the, at the new technologies, the, 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 the turbulence in the marketplace, and the, and the globalization of markets today, and the speed at which things change. And I'm telling you that if you, are, if you do not walk in a certain kind of urgency, opportunities will come, and opportunities will go, and you didn't even know that they came. By the time you start working on it, <clears throat> the kegger has left the party, <laughs> spiritually speaking. <laughs> I, I, I recently, I recently, <laughs> I, I studied, a, 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 actually it was, a, it, it was a study, I read a book Deta detailing how organizations change and why some, it was, it was put out by Harvard. Now listen, most Harvard professors are fools. I'll tell you why I said that. Because the Bible says that, that if you believe there is no God, you're a fool. Most Harvard professors are fools. I didn't say it. The Bible said it. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. But this Harvard professor got it right. <laughs> Not many get it right at Harvard, but this one got it right. Here's their findings. Without a sense of urgency, organizations, get this, are you ready for this? Organizations without a sense of urgency are doomed to 70% failure. Oh, yeah, you'll probably still get a paycheck because, you know, the, uh, uh, Kate Brown will send you your paycheck. So you don't have anything to worry about. That's what bugs me. You know what I'd respect her for? Is if she told all of her little henchmen, you know what, as for us, me and, and y'all, we're not taking a paycheck until everybody else in the state of Oregon gets their paycheck. <laughs> I'd respect her for that. I would applaud her for that. I'd support her for that. 70% of organizations will fail because there is not a sense of urgency amongst them. They fail this study uh, shows in their efforts to navigate changes clearly needed to survive in the future. I think Harvard got it right. The Apostle Paul says, be urgent, understanding what time it is. Know, know this, that there's a certain kind of urgency required, a certain kind of urgency that actually works for success in your life, success in your business, success in the church, in your, in, in your family. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. You, you will not be successful financially until you have a certain kind of urgency. You, you, you won't be successful in your marriage until there's a certain kind of urgency and you stop putting things off. If you have children, you want to raise successful children, teach them and model for them a sense of urgency. Not only, but that for sure and first and foremost is a sense of urgency. 
Every great venture begins with a high sense of urgency. I found it interesting that the, these same, these same uh, 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 Harvard individuals said this. We, we're not going to want to hear this, but it's, it's their stuff. They discovered that anxiety, anger, and frustration result when urgency is depleted. You're a procrastinator. You got to own it. Come on, just own it. Procrastination is my sin. It only brings me sorrow. I know I ought to change my ways. In fact, I will tomorrow. <laughs> Truth is, like my wife said, to me, many times, you know the right thing to do. It's just that we put it off. We delay. We don't get it done. We don't do it. Tomorrow, later, someday. Listen, someday never comes. One of these days never comes around. We keep putting it off. Then we just forget about it. James says in James chapter 4 and verse 17, remember it is a sin to know what you ought to do. I mean, I just loaded the gun and pointed it at my head. I'm giving my wife all these verses to work on me. <laughs> so who's the real nutcase here? Yeah, it's, it's, it's me. Remember it is a sin to know what to do. And what? Did you know that the Bible says, how many of you are enjoying this so far? How many of you know that the Bible says there's five causes of procrastination? <laughs> I'm sure you're just going to be thrilled to know this. The first one, James says, is just being double-minded. Double-minded. Double-minded means you cannot or, or will not make up your mind. You are indecisive. You vacillate. You hesitate. And, and, in the and in the definition it says, and even when you make a decision, you could just as easily change it. You're double-minded. Or you're a perfectionist. Boy, did you just feel the air leave the building. You know... <clears throat> Perfectionism will paralyze you. In, in Ecclesiastes 11, it says, if you wait for the perfect conditions, you'll never get anything done. Did you know that, that uh, sociologists now are, are referring to perfectionism as a mental disease? Yeah, they're, they're referring to it as a, as a mental illness if you're a perfectionist. So don't brag about it. I mean, you know, get set free. Don't brag about it. You're in, you're in the book. You made the list. In, in over 284 studies, they have found that high levels of perfectionism correlated with depression, anxiety, and eating disorders. <sighs> Did you know that fear will keep you from making quality decisions? Yeah, fear. When you're afraid, you will delay putting things off. And that fear, listen, I've said this all along. Fear is worse than COVID. Fear is worse than COVID. Fear, listen, wear your mask if that makes you feel better. Or don't. But listen, fear will kill you. Fear dumps stuff 
biologically into your bloodstream that will cause you to die a slow but steady and certain death. And I just want, I want you to know this, that I, I've had COVID. It's serious. I mean, it's not a, it's not a joke. It's not a joke for Larry Cooper. It's a real deal. But there's things worse than that. Fear is worse than that, what it will do to you. Pride. Pride's, pride will cause you to procrastinate. See, a real proud person wants to be in control. Control is just a, a, a manifestation of pride. Sorry. Suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, pride, you, you, you put yourself on this pedestal and everybody around you has to worship your ideas. That's what pride will do. And it will cause you to procrastinate. And, and the mother, really, of them all is laziness. Proverbs 13 says that a lazy man wants much but gets little. So, time to dump the excuses. Hello? Time to dump the excuses. Here's, here's some excuses. I've, maybe you've heard these. I, the, the, these were given to an insurance company from people who had car accidents. I mean, you want to hear some excuses? I've heard them. Here's some dillies. Coming home, I drove into the wrong driveway and collided with a tree I didn't have. Here's another one. I thought my window was down. I found out it was up when I put my hand through it. I glanced at my mother-in-law and headed over the cliff. <laughs> oh, boy. I was driving to the doctor's office with rear-end trouble. <laughs> It goes on. <laughs> I was driving to the doctor's office with rear end trouble. I don't know what it was when my, uni <laughs> my universal joint gave out and caused the accident. <laughs> and lastly, the pedestrian had no idea which way to go, so I ran over him. Listen, we laugh at those, and we should, but there are some excuses you have been using. Well, so what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Well, listen, I'm going to start writing some things down. Why? Because it's important to have a list. Why? Because I am, I am not going to be a procrastinator. So I'm going to do it now. I'm not going to do it tomorrow or someday. I'm going to do it now. And I'm going to stay, and I, I'm going to stay I, that list is going to stay with me 24-7. You want to see my list? I'd be happy to show you my list. I got lists. Why? Because it's important for me not to come to the end and be full of regret. I mean regret. You need a spiritual partner. For some, the only way you're going to lose weight is to have somebody that you're accountable to and with to work out. 
and, and for some of you to break this thing of, of procrastination in your life and to start getting a sense of, of, of urgency back into your life, you're going to need a partner. So find one. Don't wait for one to come to you. That's just part of your procrastination. You go find somebody. Well, I, nobody, I, I don't have any friends. Come give me a break. I've heard that. That just makes me sick. Listen, you want friends, you be friendly. That's what the Bible says. Hello. Hello. And lastly, do it now. Do it now. One of these days doesn't cut it. 